boy, are we in trouble. You've seen some crazy announcement out of the Bank of Japan today, for example. Uh, it reminds me of my time in uh, the great financial crisis when every single day you had some sort of talking head from the finance uh, circles, whether it was the head of Lehman or the head of Bear Stearns. Oh, don't worry. Everything is just fine. Nothing to see here. Um, as soon as the talking heads start saying stuff like that, you know that there's... Uh, you know, there's some uh, approaching flames and uh, yeah, a little bit nervous, to be honest. Canadian and former hedge fund manager and individual investor Greg Foss joins Leia Helpern to discuss Bitcoin and why the fiat Ponzi is running out of time. Bitcoin is a profound gift to the world's financially marginalized. With a small amount of knowledge and a smartphone, members of the middle and lower class, as well as those in the developing world and the billions who remain unbanked, now have a reliable placeholder for their hard-earned capital. Greg Foss often describes Bitcoin as portfolio insurance. The motivations behind Bitcoin's creation were certainly multifaceted, but it seems evident that one of, if not the primary problem Satoshi set out to solve was that of unchangeable monetary policy. Some 13 years since the release of the first block, this goal has been unceasingly achieved. Bitcoin stands alone as the first ever manifestation of enduring digital scarcity and monetary immutability a protocol enforcing a dependable supply schedule by way of a decentralized mint, powered by harnessing real-world energy via Bitcoin mining and verified by a globally distributed, radically decentralized network of nodes. Roughly 19 million Bitcoin exist today, and no more than 21 million will ever exist. Bitcoin is conclusive monetary reliability, the antithesis of an alternative to debasing fiat currency. Nothing like it has ever existed, and I believe its emergence is timely for much of humanity. Before we listen to Greg Foss, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. Thanks for watching our videos. What is it going to take to see Bitcoin go up again? It will be some sort of event that uh, comes out of left field. Uh, something like Russia pricing oil and natural gas in Bitcoin. Something like a central bank of a large country uh, divulging that they've accumulated a certain amount of Bitcoin and plan to accumulate more of it. Or perhaps it's nothing more than education where people realize that every single asset in the world is being debased because of the Fed policy. Let's get on board an asset that is programmed to increase in value, whose monetary supply is written in math and code. So, Education's the long run. The short run would be something like a, uh, uh, you know, an, an announcement. And then the real one will be, uh, or a, a very potential one is when the Fed pivots. The Fed pivot will increase values of, uh, or, or stop the bleeding in a lot of risk assets. And unfortunately, Bitcoin is still traded as a risk asset, even though, as you know, I think it should be traded as insurance. I'm not bigger than the market. You got to watch what the market's doing, not what you believe. So lots of ways it could happen. But unfortunately, there's lots of ways it could still, uh, you know, experience some down uh, downdrafts, no question. Well, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but just given the macro environment right now, what will spark the Fed to pivot? What do you think is going to break down in the system, knowing everything that's happening from Europe to Japan and beyond? Look, Japan, I mean, there's all sorts of things that could happen. You already have some Fed governors that are talking back the, the you know, assumed 75 basis point uh, increase that's coming in the next two weeks. Uh, there's Fed governors are smart enough to read financial markets. Uh, you know, today's close on the equity markets was pathetic. Financial stocks took a huge gap lower at the end of the day. Uh, business confidence is at all time lows, literally all time lows. This is not good for the economy. And the USA is going to have to choose whether it wants full employment or control inflation but it's not going to be able to do both. Okay. The likely pivot comes in my opinion, where they change their inflation target, where they move it from 2% to something like 4%. Then they declare victory and say, okay, so now we have 4% inflation targets. So now we can afford to, uh, you know, stop the tightening cycle. It's, it, you know, it's, it's always that, Matt, it's always smoke and mirrors with the fed uh, they talk a big game and then they pivot because the markets and the U.S. dollar global wrecking ball is 
destroying emerging markets right now. Historic losses in emerging markets. Well, when you have historic losses in of capital in emerging markets, those are your trading partners. Those cause glo global uh, GDP to decrease. A global depression is in the offing, and I think the Fed will pivot. I'm not certain of it because I think that Jerome Powell is not the right man for that chair. He's a lawyer. He is not a risk manager. Tell us what's one thing that central bankers are doing right right now and the biggest thing they're getting wrong. I honestly cannot think of anything they're doing right. Okay. Like I think they are absolutely uh, very juniors in the room. Uh, they are not listening to the markets. They are using backward looking data. Okay. Employment reports are backward looking. They're not looking to financial conditions. They're not looking at credit spreads. They're not looking at the, the, uh, the uh, jamming up of financial markets. You know, this is a situation where you have a guy that's trying to be like the old Paul Volcker, okay, the uh, Fed chairman in 1982 that arrested uh, inflation in 1982. The difference is, that the debt situation in the world is about three times larger than it was when Volcker uh, used the same uh, tactics. It doesn't work with a global debt spiral that we're in that we've talked about this. Someone asked that question. Total global debt to GDP is 400%. It doesn't work. Okay. There is a limit that you can increase interest rates before the whole system explodes. It's like the, the, the central bankers haven't even done the math. It's very concerning. So I'm afraid I can't think of anything they're doing correctly. If they laid out that they've done that they've actually done the math, then I'd have more confidence in it. I don't believe they've actually done the math. Can the Fed lower inflation without causing a recession? The Federal Reserve has never managed to significantly decrease inflation without causing job losses, but it's trying to now. Central bank officials hope they can cool down an overheated economy by raising interest rates. Last month, consumer prices in the U.S. rose at their fastest rate in 40 years. Since 1961, the central bank has sought to curb inflation with a spree of rate hikes nine times. On eight of those occasions, the Fed's tightening led to a recession. The one exception is 1994, when the Fed implemented a series of sharp rate hikes that yielded lower inflation but no recession over the ensuing years. This success helped establish then-Fed Chair Alan Greenspan's reputation as an economic maestro. One of the main reasons Federal Reserve officials don't fear inflation these days is the belief that they have tools to deploy should it become a problem. Those tools, however, come with a cost and can be deadly to the kinds of economic growth periods the U.S. is experiencing. Hiking interest rates is the most common way the Fed controls inflation. It's not the only weapon in the central bank's arsenal with adjustments to asset purchases and strong policy guidance also at its disposal but it is the most potent. It's also a very effective way of stopping a growing economy in its tracks. The late Rudy Dornbusch, a noted MIT economist, once said that none of the expansions in the second half of the 20th century died in bed of old age. Everyone was murdered by the Federal Reserve. Whatever the Feds decide to do, we are confident that our investment in Bitcoin will come handy in the future. What do you think of Greg Foss' interview? What are the factors that can cause the rise of Bitcoin again? Let us know your opinion in the comments. Thanks for watching.